today guys okay this one is super simple I wanted to I wanted to just cut not do lots of mixed media on this one I wanted to just sort of just work with the papers I have got a stack of Vicky Booten papers that I just buy one or two of each collection and but they all this is something I want you to know if you like a particular designer right so for instance Vicky Booten right if you like her collections you might like the fact that they're bright you might like the patterns she uses you might like the style of the very mixed media looking style you might like a very classic um, very floral look all that sort of thing trust me when I say especially with us American crafts you can buy a little bit from one collection and a little bit from the next collection and 99% of the time they will work together so if you don't want to buy an entire collection so you don't want to buy the whole paper pad or the whole collection depending how it's sold but you want to get the 12 by 12s because you think you know that would work for me um that's what i prefer to use as a background page or whatever um try buying a couple from this and a couple from that because you, this here the one i'm cutting out now is vicky booten's color study spheres that's what i'm cutting out but i'm putting it on top of vicky booten's storyteller moonbeams so i'm combining storyteller and color study on the one layout and it totally works so instead of starting off with a white base and getting texture and all that texture paste and ink and all that sort of thing in there I decided that I wanted to let the papers do the talking so this is where I so the moonbeams I'm using as my background what I'm actually the subject that I'm scrapping is actually my middle child Angela when she was quite a bit younger and she was only I think she was about one she wasn't quite two in these photos so she was only just shy of two I think this was in February she turned two in March so she was at kinder gym and we were I took photos and I'm so glad I did because literally I think it was not long after that she broke her arm and we had to stop so and then for some reason or another we didn't go back to it for whatever reason but I've got the photos and I've got the memory so I wanted to scrap it now I wanted to use blues because the PCYC gym gymnastics the equipment they were using everything was blue so I thought you know what perfect everything was very um primary colors so that's why you can see next to me there I've got mustard seed uh blueprint sketch and candied apple they're off to the side there in the distress oxides because I do use those on this layout in my title now in true Karen style this is what I'm doing I'm going to use the papers are going to talk for themselves okay so they're going to they're just going to work for themselves here I really like where I cut the spheres my two my three by four no what are they are they three by four I'm going to measure it give me one second whilst whilst I make some noise uh, for okay they're two and three quarters by four that's the size of my photos so they wedge in beautifully in the background tucked in and around those spheres I loved that look awesome now you can do this on it doesn't have to be color study it could be there's a lot of different um patterns and whatnot you could do this sort of technique where you tuck the photo so instead of having them all photo matted and square and plum and perfect instead of doing that you could you can do this now the one thing that bothered me is the fact that i made it sort of like a top and a bottom and I've got those gaps on the side later on it bothers me a little bit but I fix it so don't panic it's all good so I'm going through I'm 
gluing these down because there's no point in pulling them in and out, in and out, because I know that's where I want to put them. So just put them down. I went around the edges of them with the blueprint sketch just to give them a tiny bit of a colored border, but I didn't want to actually photo mat each photo. I didn't want to raise them up or anything. This is very much a flat layout. It's, there's very little, I do back my, my cut file. I do back that with some foam tape. But other than that, it's a pretty flat layout. Now, this title I actually printed from Cricut Design Space. It is Amy Valencia. It is an Amy Valencia cut file and it's literally Chasing Toddlers is my cardio. So that, I thought that was the most perfect, <laughs> absolutely the most perfect title for this because that is literally what I was doing. And yeah, it was good. So I decided that I was going to use these colors and I was just going to paint over them because there's a little bit of, in the word toddlers and cardio at the bottom, there's actually these little tiny notches taken out and you do notice it right at the very end in the close-ups that I do. But I wanted to just sort of use very, very, toddler colors that blended with the PCYC gymnastics furniture. So this is where I'm going with this. I'm just using a bit of mustard seed, a bit of blueprint sketch. I actually don't use that color very often. When I bought it, I thought I would because I love the color, but I actually don't use it anywhere near as much as I thought I would. And this is a huge learning thing too. I've had a few people ask me about what inks would you start off with? Um, what tools would you start off with? What things would you say are essential to get started? Now, I was actually thinking about it and I, I have a lot of things that I use all the time, but would I class them as essential? If I was starting from scratch now and I was as creative as what I am, I would probably, I would definitely go with the Distress Oxide inks first because I find that I really don't reach for the Distress inks nearly as much. I'm very glad that I only bought the Distress inks in the mini cubes because I really don't use them as much as I probably should for the money that I outlaid on them. I would definitely go the oxides. Now I I have all or nothing. That is that is the thing that kills my bank account. I either have to have them all or have none of them. So yes, I am very privileged and I'm very much aware of it that I have got all of the distress oxide colours and I bought all of the ink pads. But when it comes to the dress, Distress Oxide sprays, I do not have all of them. Because what I learnt with the Oxide inks is I wanted, what I've learnt is I don't reach for all of the colours because they don't all appeal to my layouts. There are some colours that other than doing the swatch, I don't think I've ever actually used. Um... If I'm being completely honest, well, I used cracked pistachio last week, which is the first time I think I've probably ever used it. Maybe I've used it one other time. Um, just looking at the colours while I'm talking to you. Uh, I've probably used all of them. Candied apple is not one that I use very often. I'm using it on here, but... I don't use it very often because it's that bright red that I don't like. I prefer Lumberjack Plaid. Um, I like that deeper red rather than the bright fire engine red. So that's just me. I would definitely, that's where I would spend the money. And then I would, because the other thing is too, when you have these colors, like I know that Candy Apple Red is as it says it is, bright candy apple red, right? I know that I do not want to ever spray that on the layout 
there is no way there is there is no layout I could ever come up in my mind that I would want to spray that color down because it is just going to look like blood there's just no way around it. I don't think I do not have a way around that I have the ink so for Christmas layouts if I ever want to go down that path but I can tell you when it comes to Christmas layouts lumberjack plaid is my go-to color because it is that deep rich red which is that's what Santa is to me. Santa Claus is that deep velvet red color. Um, so as far as that goes, distress stains, I have actually never used them. I've never, I don't have one. I am thinking about getting one in next month's design team box just to give it a try uh, or maybe two so that I can mix and match them, you know, like so that they can work together. I find that I have to at least have two of something to get it to work. Um, I'm just waffling over. I'm backing a cut file. I'm, I'm laying my cut file on my offset. So I did create the offset myself. And the offset on this one is actually 0.111. So FYI. Um, what else would I tell you? Good scissors are essential. A good trimmer is essential. Paint brushes... I personally, as an Aussie, I love the Montmartre ones. They're an affordable range and they do really well. And I don't feel guilty when I use them on oxides because they're not $30 each. So good black and white pen, whether it's a Posca paint pen or a Uniball Signo. I will go the Uniball Signo pens all day long because they flow beautifully very rarely do I get a dodgy one but I'm also very well known for running through wet mediums as well um what else I would say it's not essential because you can always use the edge of your scissors but I do love my um edge distressing tool it was only like $4.99 dirt cheap I think I got it from maybe it was craft online at the time not sure. I think it was Crafts Online. My pokey tool. My stamping blocks. If you're going to go down the route of stamps. I have never spent a lot on stamps. So I'm at the point now where in my scrapbooking world where I'm actually looking to purchase a really good stamp and die set with some nice florals so if you have one that you love I would love you to leave a message below and let me know where you got it from how much it was what it is I would love that because I'm looking to invest in a few if you've been around for a while you know last year I invested in the paper rose studio leaves I think they're le it's leaves and leaves and dies leaves and branches I think it's called and it was 60 bucks but it was the stamp and the dies and I love that I love to fussy cut because it's quick but I also love being able to just run some stuff through my die cutting machine and they come out perfect every time there is very much a difference between something that's fussy cut and something that is die cut it has a different finish to it so that definitely the other cheap and cheerful extra bit that I could possibly chuck your way would probably be liquid pearls that's probably the next thing they're made by Ranger and you can get them in so many colors so so many they're pearlescent they have texture to them they add texture to your page they add shine shimmer I love them not to mention glossy accents I just used it there not essential to start off with some people use it as a glue I to be fair have never used it as a glue I use it as a glossy accent so to add gloss on top of something else I do like using it like I did on this application going over my title so it looks kind of looks like it's been heat embossed but 
it's bubbly I love it absolutely love it now here I'm using some brads I bought these brads from scrapbook fantasies 12 months ago they are from the eyelet eyelet outlet say that fast they're from the eyelet outlet and brads brand I bought these ones from Scrapbook Fantasies. I don't know if they still have them. Scrapbook Fantasies, if you don't know, is a little Aussie business. And it is up in Gladstone in Queensland. Alicia Redshaw, she does the most amazing designs. She's she is the bomb.com. Don't you don't you worry about that. She's amazing. Um, if you haven't seen any of her stuff, show us some love. Head up to her store, let her know where you came from, and She's got, <clears throat> excuse me, she has got some absolutely awesome things that are different. She makes her own um, flair. So if you like flair or you like brads, that sort of thing, um, check it out because she's got some very, and she's got a lot of Aussie things. I've got one with fairy bread. I've got one with Vegemite on toast. I've got some with um, the COVID there's four of them. One's got a toilet roll, one's got sanitizer, uh, one's got tissues and one's got a mask on it. That's something I will be using on another layout because I'd already done my COVID layout before I bought before I bought those. So. so now I'm just doing my journaling sort of going with the circles because I felt like if I went straight it would look a little bit weird. I've added my little mobile phones. These are little iPhones. They are so cute. I have wanted to use them, but I wanted to use them in a situation where, like this, so I could use heaps of them. And, yeah, I, I love how they, they, they look pretty cute. So I'm doing my journaling with my Uniball Signo Fine Uniball. It's a gel grip. Uniball... Uh, gel grip pen and it is 0.7 millimeter. I love these pens. Love, love, love them. Um, they flow, the the flow and I oh, just love them. They're so good. They're brilliant. So let me know below if there's anything that you would like to see me do, anything you'd like to see me um, develop. I'm sorry, I've got something. <clears throat> I feel like I need to cough, but yeah. It's early in the morning. I decided I'm no longer going to be recording in the afternoon unless I'm absolutely desperate because all I do is yawn and it is so rude. But it's just, you know, when you get to the end of the day, we all do it when we're at work or, you know, if we're stay at home mums or whatever, we always get to hit that three o'clock slump. And it seems to be the time that I decide to do my voiceovers because I've done everything, I've edited everything, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> So, yeah, but it's okay. It's all good. So, I'm just finishing this off. I did go around with the black border because, see, I joined the black border between the two. See, just there. Now it looks right to me. I need the border. I don't know what it is. So, here's the close-ups for you guys. Let me know what you think. I will be back tomorrow with another video with something completely different because that's what I do. I scrap completely differently every day. <laughs> <laughs> depends what mood I'm in I'm a Gemini in case you don't know next month is my birthday month so I'm going to be doing some different bits and pieces my birthday's on the 10th of June I'm pretty excited this year some some years I just like to skim over the fact that I'm getting older but this year I'm actually excited this year pretty excited that I want to want to do something I don't know what to do I'm, I'm trying to think about something. I might do birthday week, maybe, um, and do some birthday related. Or maybe I'll do some photos from when I was younger. Ooh, that'd be scary, wouldn't it? Uh, there, there's a thought, though. See how the glossy accents just makes it look like it's awesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will chat to you later. Thanks for that. Bye for now.